to the front of the library, and to your right, upstairs and downstairs, there are restrooms. Or down through the park, down across the little road, there is another public restroom there. Please silence your devices. Now would be good. And you look at you all complying. It's lovely. Um, also, please disable any flashy things that go off if you take photographs. Uh, during the production, there will be characters traipsing up and down the aisleways. Please be aware so that your legs and feet do not catch swords and laps and, and bums as they go by. In the event of an emergency, the exits are all around you. <laughs> Just go. And with that, enjoy, enjoy the, the show! show. <laughs>
come, sir? You bite your thumb at us, sir. Oh, no, sir. I do not bite my thumb at you, sir. But I bite my thumb, sir. Would well, you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No, sir. Ooh, if you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. What, no better? Sit better, here comes Tybalt. <laughs> yes, better, sir. <laughs> you lie. Well, draw, if you be men. What, <laughs> fools, put up your sword. You know not what you do. What thou drawing among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolia, and look upon thy death. I do but keep the peace. Put up your sword, or manage it to part these men with me. But draw a of peace? I hate the word, as I hate hell. All Montagues and thee, how about thee, coward? Please. <laughs> uh, you shall! Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. If ever you disturb them again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For this time, all the rest depart away. You, Capulet and Montague, shall come this afternoon to hear our further pleasure in this case. And now, on pain of death, depart. Two households, both alike in dignity. In fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes. A pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventured piteous overthrows. Do with their deaths bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love. And the continuance of their parents' rage. Which but their children's end naught could remove. Is now the two hours traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our, our toil shall, shall strive to mend. mend. Ancient quarrel new abroach. Speak, niece. Were you by when it began? Here were the servants of your adversary, and yours close fighting ere I did approach. I drew to part them, but then came more and more, and fought on part on part until the prince came and parted either part. Oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today. Right glad I am he was not at this fray. Madam, an hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east. A troubled mind drave me to walk abroad, where underneath the grove of sycamore that westward rooted to the city's side, so early walking did I see your son. Towards him I made, but he was ware of me and stole into the covert of the wood. Many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning dew, adding to clouds more clouds with his deep sighs. But all so soon as the old cheering sun should in the furthest east begin to draw the shady curtain from a rover's bed away from the light steals home, my wayward son, 
whose private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his window, locks fair daylight out, and makes himself an artificial night. Black and portentous must this humor prove, unless Good counsel, may the cause remove. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can learn of him. Have you importuned him by any means? Both by myself as many other friends, but he his own affections counselor. Could we but learn from whence his sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cure as no. See where he comes, so please you step aside. I'll know his grievance or be much denied. I would thou were so happy in thy state to hear true shrift. Come, madam, let's away. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? But news struck nine. Ay, me. Sad hours seem long. What? Was that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours. Uh, not having that, which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love. Out of her favor where I'm in love. Alas, that love, so precious in his view, should be so tyrannous and rough and cruel. But Frey was here, yeah, tell me not. For I have heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but I more with love. <laughs> <laughs> Dost thou laugh? No, cuz, I rather weep. Oh, good heart, at what? At thy good heart. Oppression. By such is love's transgression. Love is a smoke raised with the fume of sighs. Being purged, a fire sparkling in lover's eye. Being vexed, a sea nourished with lover's tears. What is it else? A madness most discreet, a choking gall and a preserving sweet. For what my cuz? Soft, I will go along. And if you leave me so, you do me wrong. Tut, I have lost myself. I'm not here. This is not Romeo. He's some other where. Tell me, in sadness, who is it that you love? What? Shall I groan and tell thee? Groan? Why no. But sadly, <laughs> tell me who? In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I aimed so near when I supposed you loved. <laughs> a right good markman. And she's fair, I love. A right fair mark, fair cuz, as soon as hit. Well, in that hit you miss. She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit. And in strong proof of chastity, well armed, from love's weak childish bow, she lives unharmed. She will not stay the siege of loving terms, nor, nor, nor bide the encounter of assailing eyes, nor, nor ope her lap to saint seducing gold. Though she is rich in beauty, only poor that when she dies with beauty dies her store. Then she hath sworn that she will still live chaste. She hath, and in that sparing makes huge waste, for beauty starved with her severity cuts beauty off from all posterity. She hath forsworn the love, and in that vow do I live dead, will to tell it now. Be ruled by me, forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes. Examine other beauties. Tis the way to call hers exquisite and question more. Show me a mistress that is passing fair. What doth her beauty serve? No offense. What doth her beauty serve? <laughs> but as a note. But as a note where I may read who passed that passing fair. Farewell. Thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine or else die in debt. Romeo. <laughs> we are outnumbered. If you gentlemen would care to tilt, meet us at the Piazza del Foro across the river at nine tonight. Oh, if you got the stomach for it. I will meet you there. <laughs> Come, um, you'll get your chance soon enough. <laughs> but Montague is bound as well as I in penalty alike. It is not hard, I think, for men so old as we to keep the peace. Of honorable reckoning are you both. Oh. And pity tis you lived at odds so long. But now, my lord, 
What say you to my suit? Uh, but saying o'er what I have said before, my child is yet a stranger in the world. Let uh, two more summers wither in their pride, ere uh, we may think her ripe to be a bride. The younger than she are happy mothers made. And too soon marred are those so early made. <laughs> the earth hath swallowed all my hopes but she. She is the hopeful lady of my earth. <laughs> but woo her, gentle Paris, get her heart. Uh, my will to her consent is but a part. And she agree within her scope of choice lies my consent and fair according voice. <laughs> This night I hold an old accustomed feast, whereto I have invited many a guest such as I love. And you among the score. <laughs> One more, most welcome, makes my number uh, four. Ah! <laughs> oh, come, come, go with me. <laughs> uh, oh, go, Sura. Uh, trudge about through Fair Verona. Find those persons out whose names are written there. And to them say, my house and welcome on my pleasure stay. <clears throat> I am sent to find those names that are here written, and I cannot read. I must to the learned and quickly do. Tut, man, what? one fire burns out. Another's burning. Oh. Take some new infection to thine eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Your plantain leaf is excellent for that. For what, I pray thee? For your broken shin. Oh, oh. Romeo, art thou mad? Not mad, not mad, but bound more than a madman is. I shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped and tormented and... <laughs> but then, good fellow. Oh, God, get it again, sir. I pray you, can you read? Yeah. I, mine own fortune and my misery. Uh, perhaps you have learned by book. Uh, without book, uh, uh, can you read anything that, uh, that is here writ? I, if I know the letters and the language. Uh, you, you, you say fair. I, I bid you farewell. Well, stay. Huh? Oh. oh, I can read. Huh? <laughs> Signor Martino, his wife and daughters, County Anselm and his beauteous sisters, the lady widow of Vitravio, mm -hmm. Signor Pacentio and his lovely nieces, Michael Capulet, his wife and daughters, my fair niece Rosaline. Oh. <laughs> Samson and Chiara, Tybalt, Lucio, and the lively Helena, a fair assembly. Whither should they come? I go. Oh, 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 whither? Uh, um, uh, to, to my house, to our house, uh, to supper. Uh, whose house? Uh, the, the, my master's. Indeed, I should have asked you that before, but who, who is your master? Oh, I shall tell you before you ask. Hi. My master is the great and rich Capulet. And if you be not of the house of Montague, there, <laughs> pray you come and crush a cup of wine. <laughs> oh, oh, who, who did it? I pray you, my <laughs> At this same ancient feast of Capulet, steps the fair Rosaline, oh. who thou so lovest, with all the other admired beauties of Verona. Go oh. thither, and with untainted eye, compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. When the devout religion of mine eye maintains such falsehood, then turn tears to fire. One fairer than my love, the all-seeing sun, ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. Tut, man, oh. you saw her fair, none else being by, herself poised with herself in either eye, oh. but in these crystal scales, let there be weighed your lady's love with some other maid that I shall show thee shining at this feast, and she shall scant show well that now shows best. I'll go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendor of mine own. Thou hearest our counsel. Thou 
knowest my daughter's of a pretty age. Oh, faith, I can tell her age unto an hour. My Susan and she, God rest all Christian souls, were, were of an age. Well, Susan is with God. She was too good for me. But I remember when Juliet was but young. She could stand alone, nay, by the rule. She ran and waddled all about. For even the day before, when she broke her brow, and then my husband, God be with his soul, who was a merry man, took up the child. Yea, quote he, dost thou fall upon thy face? Thou wilt fall backward when thou hast more wit, wilt thou not, Julie? And by my holiday, the pretty wretch left crying and said, I, <laughs> to see now how a jest shall come about. I warned him I would live a thousand years. I never should forget it. Will thou not, quoth he? And the pretty fool stinted and said, I. Enough of this. I pray thee, hold thy peace. Yes, madam. Yet I cannot choose but laugh to think that it should leave crying and say, I. And yet I warrant it had upon its brow a bump as big as a young cockle oh. stone, a barless knock, and it cried bitterly. Yea, quoth my husband, falls to fall my face. Thou wilt fall backward when thou comest to age, wilt thou not, Julie? <laughs> Fool stinted and said, I. And stint thou too, I pray thee, nurse. Uh, Say I. Uh, peace. I have done. <laughs> oh, God, Martha, to this grace, thou wast the prettiest babe that e'er I nurse. And I might live to see thee married what? To have my wish. Mary? That Mary is the very theme I came to speak of. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It is in honor that I dream not of. In honor? Were not I thine only nurse, I would say thou hadst sucked wisdom from thy teeth. Oh. <laughs> well, think of marriage now. Younger than you here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years that you are now a maid. Thus then in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his bride. A man, young lady, lady, such a man as all the world, why, he's a man of wax. Verona Summer has not such a flower. Nay, hey, he's a flower, in faith, a very flower. Speak briefly, can you like of Paris's love? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read o'er the volume of young Paris's face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. This precious book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him only lacks a cover. Thus shall you share all that he doth possess in having him making yourself no less. No less? Nay, bigger. The women grow no. by men. Oh, stop. Speak briefly, can you like of Paris's love? Or look to like, if looking liking move. But no more deep will I endart mine eye than your consent give strength to make it fly. Madam! Madam! <laughs> Madam, the guests are come. Um, um, supper served. Uh, you call. Uh, my young lady, asshole. <laughs> the nurse cursed in the pantry. Oh, and all in a great extremity. Oh, I must hence to wait. I beseech you, follow straight. <laughs> we follow thee. Juliet, the county stays. <laughs> Go, girl. Seek happy nights, oh, happy days. <laughs> ah! So, uh, give me a torch. I'm not for this ambling. Being but heavy, I, I will bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Well, well, I believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead. So stakes me to the ground. I cannot move. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with him above a common down. I am too sore and pierced with his shaft to soar with his light feathers. And so bound, I cannot bound a pitch above dull woe. Under love's heavy burden do I sink. And to sink in it, should you burden love? To great oppression for a tender thing. Was love a tender thing? It's too rough, too rude, 
too boisterous, and it pricks like thorn. If love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking, and you beat love down. Come, knock and enter, and no sooner in but every man betake him to his legs. A torch for me. Let wantons, light of heart, uh, tickle the senseless rushes with their heels. For I am proverb with a grandsire phrase. I'll be a candle holder and look on. Uh, the game was ne'er so fair, and, and I am done. That duns the mouse. The constable's own word. If thou art done, we'll draw thee from the mire of this sir reverence love, wherein thou stickest up to the ears. Come, we burn daylight. Ho! And we mean well and go into this mask. But tis no way to go. Why, may one ask? I dreamed a dream tonight. And so did I. Well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie. <laughs> In bed, asleep, while they do dream things true, oh. Mercutio. Then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She is the fairy's midwife. And she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomies athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. Her chariot is an empty hazelnut made by the joiner squirrel or the old grub. Time out of mind, the fairy's coachmakers. Her wagon spokes made of long spinner's legs. The cover, the wings of grasshoppers, Traces of the smallest spiders. Webs, the colors of the moonshine's watery beams. Her whip of cricket's bone. The lash of film. Her wagoner is a small gray-coated gnat. Not so big as a round little worm pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. And in this state, she gallops, night by night, through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. Peace. Peace, Mercutio, peace. Thou talkst of nothing. True. <laughs> I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy which is as thin of substance as the air and more inconstant than the wind, who woos even now the frozen bosom of the north and being angered, puffs away from thence, turning his face to the dew-dropping south. This wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. I fear too early. For my mind misgives some Consequence, yet hanging in the stars, shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night's revels. And expire the term of this spised life, closed in my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. But he that hath the steerage of my course, Direct my sail. On, lusty gentlemen. Strike, drop.
lady is that? <laughs> or she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel in Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows as yonder lady or her fellow shows. Did my heart love till now? <laughs> For swear it's sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. <laughs> Gentlemen, and to say true, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all the town here in my house to him sparingly. Therefore, be patient, take no note of him. I will, the which if thou respect, show a fair presence and put off these frowns. Ha <laughs> ha! An ill beseeming semblance for a feast. It fits with such a bill as a guest. Will not endure him. Oh, he shall be endured. What, Goodman boy? I say he shall go too. <laughs> Am I the master here or you? Go too. You'll not endure him. God shall mend my soul. You'll make a mutiny among my guests. You'll set cock a hoop. You'll be the man. Hi, Uncle, tis a shame. Oh, go to, go to. You are a saucy boy. Is it so indeed? You are a brinkox. Go. Be quiet. More shade. I'll make you quiet. I will withdraw. But this intrusion shall seem sweet convert to bitter gall. <clears throat> what? <laughs> Cheerly, my hearts, come to suffer. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle fine is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much. <laughs> Which mannerly devotion shows in this? For saints uh -huh. have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch. And palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. I've got saints' lips, and holy palmers too. Aye, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray. Grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. They move not, for my prayer's effect I take. Thus from my lips by yours, my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Oh, sin from my lips? Oh, trespass, sweetly urge. Give me my sin again. You kiss by the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your mother craves a word with you. What is her mother? Mary Bachelor, her mother is the lady. 
lady of the house, and a wise lady, and a good, and a virtuous. I know it's her daughter that you talked with all. <laughs> I tell you, he that can lay hold of her shall have the chase. <laughs> she Capulet? Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's debt. Away, be gone. The sport is at its best. Aye, so I fear. The more is my unrest. <laughs> Come hither, nurse. What is yon gentleman? I know not. Go ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. <laughs> his name is Romeo and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen unknown and known too late. Didris birth of love it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? Oh, uh, a rhyme I learned even now. One I dance for fall. And on, and on. Your father calls. We must go in. <laughs> I go forward when my heart is here? No. Turn back, dull earth, and find thy center out. Oh, Romeo, my cousin Romeo. He is wise, and on my life hath stolen him home to bed. Call, good Mercutio. May I'll conjure to Romeo! Humors, madman, passion, lover. Appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. Speak but one rhyme and I am satisfied. I conjure thee by Rosaline's bright eyes, by her high forehead and her scarlet lip, by her fine foot, straight leg, and quivering thigh. And the domain that there adjacent lie, that in thy likeness thou appear to us. And if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. Come, he hath hid himself among these trees to be consorted with the humorous night. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. Romeo, good night. I'll to my truckle bed. This field bed is too cold for me to sleep. Come. Shall we go? Oh, he jests at scars that never felt a wound. But soft. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east. The Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid. Well, since she is envious, her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it, cast it off. Oh, it is my lady. Oh, it is my love. That she knew she were. <laughs> she speaks. Yet she says nothing. <laughs> what of that? <laughs> Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold. Uh, Tis not to me she speaks it. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business, do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes? were they, they in her head. The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. I me! She speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel, for thou art as glorious this night, being o'er my head, as is a winged messenger of heaven. Oh, Romeo, 
Romeo. Wherefore art thou Romeo? <laughs> Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or thou wilt not be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name! What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Oh, Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee, take all myself. And take me at thy word. <laughs> Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. What man art thou that thus bescreened in night so stumbless upon my counsel? For a name, I, I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself, because it is an enemy to thee. Had I had written, I would tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of that tongue's utterance. Yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo in a Montague? Neither, fair saint, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb. Uh. In the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. With love's light wings that I reproach these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out. And what love can do, that dares love attempt. Therefore thy kinsmen are no let to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against their enmity. Would not for the world they saw you here. I have Meg's cloak to hide me from their sight. <laughs> and but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death prorogued, wanting of thy love. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face, else would a maiden blush but paint my cheek for that which thou hadst heard me speak tonight. <laughs> oh, fain would I dwell on form, fain, fain deny what I have spoken. Oak, but <laughs> farewell compliment. <laughs> Dost thou love me? Julia. I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. <laughs> Yet, if thou swearest, thou mayst prove false. Huh. And lovers' perjuries, they say Jove laughs. Oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or, if thou thinkst I am too quickly won, I'll frown. Be perverse and say thee nay, so thou wilt woo. <laughs> but else, not for the world. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond, and therefore thou mayst think my behavior light. But trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more true than those that have more cunning to be strange. Lady. By yonder blessed moon, I swear oh, that swear not by the moon, <laughs> the inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb. Lest thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all. Or, if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry. And I'll believe thee. If my heart's dear love prove false. Well, do not swear. <laughs> Although I joy in thee, I have no joy in this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning, which doth cease to be ere one can say, oh, it lightens. Oh, sweet, good night. This bud of love, by summer's ripening breath, may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night. Good night. As sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that within my breast. 
Wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? <laughs> what satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet, <laughs> I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? Oh, for what purpose, love? But to be frank and give it thee again. And yet, I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. More I give to thee, more I have. For both are infinite. Lady oh, I hear some noise within. Dear love, adieu. Anon, good nurse. Sweet Montague, be true. Stay but a little. I will come again. <laughs> oh, blessed, blessed night. I am afeard. Being in night, all this may but be a dream, too flattering sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. I... If at thy bent of love be honorable, I... thy purpose marriage, send me word tomorrow by one that I will procure to come to thee, where and what time thou wilt perform the rite, and at thy foot all my fortunes all lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Madam, no. on, I come! But I do beseech thee, if thou means not well, by and by I come to seize thy suit and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive by... <laughs> a thousand times, good night. Oh, a thousand times the worse to want thy light. And love goes toward love as schoolboys from their books. But love from love? Towards school with heavy looks. Hist, Romeo, hist! Oh, for a falconer's voice to lure this tassel gentle back again! It is my soul that calls upon my name. How silver sweet sound lovers' tongues by night, like softest music to attending ears. Romeo! My dear! <laughs> At what o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? At the hour of nine. I will not fail. <laughs> Is twenty years till then. <laughs> I have forgot why I did call thee back. <laughs> Let me stand here till thou remember it. I shall forget to have thee still stand here, remembering how I love thy company. And thou still stay to have thee still forget. Forgetting any other home but this. It's almost morning. I would have thee gone, and yet no further than a wanton's bird who lets it hop a little from her hand, like a poor prisoner in his twisted jives, and with a silk thread plucks it back again, so loving jealous of his liberty. I would I were thy bird. Sweet, so would I, and yet I would kill thee with much cherishing. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Sleep dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. I were sleep in peace, so sweet to rest. Hence will I to my ghostly father's cell, and his help to crave, my dear hap to tell. <laughs> Smiles on the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light. 
flecked darkness like a drunkard reels from fourth day's path and tightens fiery wheels. Now, ere the sun advance his burning eye, the day to cheer and night's dank dew to dry, I must upfill this osier cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juiced flowers. O oh, mighty is the powerful grace that lies in herbs, plants, stones, and their true qualities. For naught, naught but on the earth doth live, not so vile, but to the earth some special good doth give. Nor aught so good, but strained from that fair use, revolts from true birth, stumbling on abuse. Virtue itself turns vice, being misapplied, and vice sometime by action dignified. Within the infant rind of this small flower, poison hath residence and medicine power. For this being smelt with that part, cheers each part. Being tasted, slays all senses with the heart. Do such opposed kings encamp them still in man, as well as herbs, grace, and rude will. And where the worser is predominant, full soon the canker death eats up that plant. Tomorrow, Father. Ah, Benedicite, what early tongue so sweet saluteth me. <laughs> Young son. It argues a distempered head oh. so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. <laughs> care keeps his watch in every old man's eye. Huh. And where care lodges, sleep will never lie. But where unbruised youth with unstuffed brain <laughs> doth couch his limbs, there golden sleep doth reign. Therefore thy earliness doth me assure thou art abroused by some distemperature. Or, if not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. <laughs> that last is true. The sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin. <laughs> Wast thou with Rosaline? With Rosaline, my ghostly father. No. I have forgot that name, and that name's woe. Well, that's my good son. But where hast thou been then? I'll tell thee, ere thou ask it me again. I have been feasting with mine enemy, for on a sudden, one hath wounded me, that's by me wounded. Oh, both are remedies within thy help and holy physic lie. I bear no hatred, blessed man, for lo, my intercession likewise steads my foe. Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. And plainly no. My heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. Yeah. <laughs> As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine, and all combined, save what thou must combine, by holy marriage. When and where and how we met, we wooed, and exchange a vow, I'll tell thee as we pass. But this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy Saint Francis! <laughs> what a change is here! Is Rosaline, whom thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? No. Young men's love then lies truly not in their heart, but in their eyes. <laughs> Maria, what a deal of brine hath washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline. And art thou changed? <coughs> Pronounce this sentence then. Women may fall when there's no strength in men. Thou chides me off for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving people and mine. And that's me bury love. Not in a grave to lay one in, another out to hell. I pray thee, chide not. She whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow. The other did not so. <laughs> she knew well thy love did read by rote and could not spell. <laughs> come, come, young waverer, come. Go with me. In one respect, I'll I assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. Oh! <laughs> Let us hence. I stand on sudden haste. Ah, wisely and slow. They stumble that run fast. <laughs> Devils 
should this Romeo be? Came he not home last night? Not to his father's. I spoke with his man. That same pale, hard-hearted wench that Rosaline torments him so that he will sure run mad. Tybalt, the kinsman of old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life! Romeo will answer it. Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master, how he dares be dared. Alas, poor Romeo, he is already dead. Stabbed with the white wench's black eye. Shot through the ear with a love song. The very pin of his heart cleft with the blind bow boy's butt shaft. <laughs> and is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why? What is Tybalt? Oh, oh, more than the Prince of Cats, I can tell you. He is the courageous captain of compliments. He fights as you sing quick song. Keeps time, distance, and proportion. Rest me his men and rests one, a two, and the third in your bosom. The very butcher of a silk button, a duelist, a duelist, oh, a gentleman of the very first house, of the first and second cause, ah, oh, the immortal Posado, the Punto Reverso, La Hay! The what? The pox of such antic, lisping, affecting fantasticos. These new tuners of accents. Oh, by Jesu, a very good blade, a very tall man, a very good whore. Why is not this a lamentable thing, grandsire, that we should be thus afflicted by these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these pout on me's who stand so much on the new form, they cannot sit at ease on the old bench. Oh, their bones, their bones. Oh, oh here comes Romeo. Oh. Here comes Romeo. Without his row, like a dried herring. Oh, what? flesh, flesh, how art thou fishified. <laughs> Signor Romeo, bonjour. There's a French salutation to your French slop. You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morrow to you both. Well, what counterfeit did I give what? you? The slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? <laughs> Pardon, good Mercutio. Uh, my business was great. And in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. Oh, well, that's as much to say a case such as yours constrains a man to bow in the hands. Meaning to curtsy. Thou hast most kindly hit it. Well, then a most courteous exposition. Hey, I'm the very pink of courtesy. A pink for flower. Right. Why then is my pump well flowered? <laughs> well said. Uh -huh. Follow me this jest now till thou hast worn out thy pump. Oh. That when the single soul is worn, the jest may remain after the wearing solely singular. Oh, single soul jest, solely singular for the single oh, mess. Come between us, good Benvolio, my wits fade. Switch it spurs, switch it spurs, or I'll cry a match. Nay, if thy wits run the wild goose chase, I have done. Oh. For thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than I am sure I have in my whole five. Was I with you there for the goose? Thou wast never with me for anything when thou wast not there for the goose. Oh, I will bite thee by the ear for that jest. Nay, good goose, bite not. Oh, my wit is a very bitter sweeting. Oh. Tis a most sharp sauce. Mm, and is it not well served into a sweet goose? Oh, here's a wit of Chevrolet that stretches Aye. from an inch narrow to an L broad. I stretch it out for that word, broad, which, added to the goose, proves thee, far and wide, a broad goose. <laughs> Why is this not better now than groaning for love? <laughs> now art thou sociable, <laughs> now art thou Romeo. Oh, stop there, stop there. Thou desirest me to stop in my tail against the hair? Thou wouldst have made thy tail large. <laughs> but thou art deceived. I would have made it short, for I was come to the depth of my whole tale, and meant indeed to occupy the argument no longer. Here's goodly gear. Oh, a sail, a sail! Me too, a shirt and a smock. Here! Oh, oh no, no, no. My fan, Peter. Oh, good Peter to hide her face, for her fan's the fairer face. <laughs> God ye good morrow, gentlemen. Oh, God ye good den, fair gentlewoman. Is it good den? Oh, tis no less, I tell you. For the body hand of the dial is now upon the prick of noon. Oh, I'm just calling you 
you? What a man are you? One gentlewoman that God hath made for himself to mar. Oh, <laughs> by my troth, it is well said for himself to mar, quotha. <laughs> Gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? <laughs> I can tell you, but young Romeo will be older when you have found him than he was when you sought him. I am the youngest of that name, for oh. fault of a worse. You say well. Yea, is worst well? Oh, very well took a faith, wisely, wisely. If you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. She will indict him to some supper. Oh, a bod, a bod, a bod, so ho! Oh, what hast thou found? Uh, no hair, sir, unless a hair, sir, and a Lenten pie. That is something stale and whore ere it be spent. Oh. An old hare whore, an old hare whore is very good meat in Lent. But a hare that is whore is too much for a score. When it whores, ere it be spent. Ah! <laughs> uh, Romeo, will you to your father's? Will to dinner thither? I will follow you. Farewell, ancient lady. <laughs> Farewell, lady. Lady, lady, shh. Mary, farewell. I pray you, sir, what saucy merchant was this who was so full of his ropery? A gentleman nurse that loves to hear himself talk and will speak more in a minute than he will stand to in a month. And if speak anything against me, I'll take him down, huh. and a lustier than he is, and 20 such jacks. Scurvy knave, I am none of his Flirt skills, I am none of his skeins, mate. And thou must stand by too and suffer every maid to use me at his pleasure. I shall no man use you at his pleasure. If I had, my weapon would have quickly been out. Oh. And uh, I see a quarrel and a good occasion and a law of ten seconds on my side. Now, before God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers. Scurvy knave. Pray you, sir, a word. And as I told you, my young lady bade me inquire you out. What she bade me say, I shall keep to myself. But first, let me tell you that should ye lead her into a fool's paradise, as they say, uh, it, it were a very gross kind of behavior, as they say, for the gentlewoman is young, and, and therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly, it were a very ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman and very weak dealing. Nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress. Oh, I good some... heart and faith, I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What wilt thou tell her, nurse, that dost not mark me? I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentlemanlike offer. Bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon. And there she shall, at Friar Lawrence's cell, be shrived and married. Oh. Oh. Here oh. is for thy hand. Oh, no, truly, sir, not, not the pen. Go to, I say you shall. Oh, uh, uh, well, this afternoon, sir. Hi. Oh, she shall be there. Oh, and stay, good nurse, uh, behind the abbey wall. Within this hour, my man Balthazar shall be with thee, and bring thee cords made like a tackled stair, which to the high top gallant of my joy must be my convoy in the secret night. Oh. Farewell. Oh. <laughs> be trusty, and I'll quit thy pain. Oh, God in Farewell. Heaven. Commend me to thy mistress. Oh, you, sir. Oh, what sayest thou, my dear nurse? Is your man secret? Uh, have you ne'er heard say that two may keep counsel putting one away? I warrant thee, my man's as true as steel. Well, sir, my mistress is the sweetest lady. <laughs> Lord, Lord, when it was a little praising thing. Yeah. Oh. But there is a nobleman in town, one Paris, who would fain lay knife aboard. But she, good soul, had as lief see a toad, a very toad, as see him. Uh, I anger her sometimes and tell her that Paris is the proper man. But I warrant you, when I say so, she looks as pale as any clout in the versal world. Uh, doth not Rosemary and Romeo begin both with a letter? Hi, nurse, what of that? Uh, both with an R. Ah, uh, mocker. That's the dog's name. R. <laughs> no, no, I know it begins with some other letter, and she hath the prettiest sentence.
pretentious of it, of you and Rosemary, it would do you good to hear it. The men needs my lady. Aye, a thousand times. Pierre! Ah, oh, oh, on the long! Before oh, and the oh. I did send the nurse. In half an hour, she promised to return. Now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine till twelve is three long hours. Yet she has not come. Had she affections in warm, youthful blood, she would be as swift in motion as a ball. My words would bandy her to my sweet love. It is to me. But old folks, many faint as they were dead. Unwieldy, heavy, slow, and pale as lead. Oh, oh God, <laughs> she comes. <laughs> looks thou sad. Oh, well, news be sad yet. Oh. Tell them merrily. <laughs> if good, thou shamest the music of sweet Ooh. news by playing it to me with so sour a face. Oh, I am a weary. Give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache. Oh, what a jaunt have I had. I would thou hadst my bones and I thy news. <sighs> Nay, come, I pray thee, speak. Good, good nurse. Speak! Do what haste? Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath? When thou hast breath, to say to me that thou art out of breath. <laughs> the excuse thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale thou dost excuse. Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that! Say either and I'll say the circumstance. Let me be satisfied. Oh, hmm. Is it good or bad? Well, <clears throat> you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo, no, not he. <laughs> Though his face be better than any man's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yet his leg excels all men's. <laughs> and for a hand and a foot and a body, though they be not to be talked on, <clears throat> Yet they are past compare. <laughs> he is not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant him gentle as a lamb. Uh, go thy ways, wench, serve God. Uh, what, have you dined at home? Uh, no, no, but all this did I know before. Oh. What says he of our marriage? Oh. Hmm? Oh. What of that? Fie, how my head aches. What a head have I. It beats as it would fall into 20 pieces. My back, oh my, oh to the other side, my back. Oh, beshrew your heart for sending me about to catch my death jaunting up and down. Oh, in faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, what says my love? Your love says, like an honest gentleman and a kind and a courteous and a handsome and I'll warrant a virtuous, mm -hmm. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? <laughs> Why, she is within. Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest. Your love says, like an honest gentleman. Where is your mother? Oh, God, lady dear, are you so hot? Mary, come up, I trow. No. Is this the poultice for my aching bone? <laughs> and forward, do your messages yourself. <laughs> Here is such a coil. Um, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to shrift today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. <laughs> the wanton blood up in your cheeks. <laughs> They'll be in scarlet straight as any new. How you to church? 
I must see another way to fetch a ladder by the which your love must climb a bird's nest soon when it is dark. I am the drudge and toil in your delight, but you shall bear the burden soon at night. Oh. <laughs> Go, I to dinner, hie you to the cell. I tell oh. thy fortune, oh, honest nurse. Farewell. <laughs> so smile the heavens upon this holy act. Amen. That after hours with sorrow chide us not. Amen. But come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Do thou but close our hands with holy words. Then love devour and death do what he dare. It is enough I may but call her mine. These violent delights have violent ends, and in their triumph die like fire and powder, which as they kiss, consume. <sighs> the sweetest honey is loathsome in its own deliciousness, and in the taste confounds the appetite. Therefore, love moderately. Long love doth so. Too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. Here comes the lady. Good even to my ghostly confessor. <laughs> Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. As much to him, else is his thanks too much. Miss Juliet. Is the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine? And that thy skill be more to blazon it? Then sweeten with thy breath this neighbor air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive in either by this dear encounter. Conceit, more rich in matter than in words, rags of his substance, not of ornament. <laughs> they are but beggars that can count their worth. But my true love, is grown to such excess that I cannot sum up some of half my wealth. Come, <laughs> come with me. <laughs> we will make short work. For well, by your leaves you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two in one. escape a brawl. For now, these hot days is the mad blood stirring. Thou art like one of those fellows when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me his horn upon the table and says, oh, God, send me no need of thee. And by operation of the second cup, draws it on someone when indeed there is no need. Am I like such a fellow? Oh, come, come. Thou art as hot a jack in thy moods as any in Italy and as soon moved to be moody, and as soon moody to be moved. And what two? The man, there were two such, we should have none shortly, for one would kill the other, thou. <laughs> thou wilt quarrel with a man that hath a hair more or a hair less on his head than thou hast. Thou wilt quarrel with a man for cracking nuts, having no other reason than thou hast hazel eyes. <laughs> thou hast quarreled with a man for coughing in the street, because he hath awakened thy dog, which hath lain asleep in the sun. <laughs> Didst thou not once fall out with a tailor for wearing his new doublet before Easter, <laughs> but with another for tying his new shoes with an old ribbon? And thou wilt tutor me from quarreling. And I were so apt to quarrel as thou art. Any man may 
have the fee simple of my life for an hour and a quarter. The fee simple, oh, simple. By my head, here come the Capulets. By my heel, I care not. <laughs> Follow me close, for I'll speak to them. Gentlemen, good den. A word with one of you. Oh, but one word with one of us? Couple it with something, make it a word, and a blow. You should find me amped to that, sir, and you will give me occasion. Could you not take some occasion without giving? Percusio Falcon swords us with Romeo. A concert? What? Uh, dost thou make us minstrels? And thou make minstrels of us look to hear nothing but discords. Here's my fiddlestick. <laughs> Here's that shall make you dance, Zeus consort. We talk here in the public haunts of men. I will withdraw unto some private place and reason coldly of your grievances, or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Well, men's eyes were made to look, and let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. Tibble. Well, I'll be hanged, sir, if you wear your livery. Romeo, the hate I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tibble, the reason that I have to love thee does much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none. Therefore, farewell. I see thou knowest me not. Boy! This shall not excuse the injuries thou hast done me. Therefore, turn and draw. I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise till thou shalt know the reason of my love and so good Capulet. Good Capulet, which name I tender as dear as my own. Be satisfied. Oh, come. Dishonorable, vile submission. Tybalt, you rat catcher. Will you walk? What wouldst thou have with me? Oh, good. King of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives. That I mean to make bold with all, and shall you use me hereafter? Dry beat the rest of the age. Will you pluck your sword out of its pilcher by the ears? You should. Make haste. Lest mine be about your ears, ere it be out. I am for you. Since Mercutio, put that right here. Your Pisano. You stop. Hold, Mercutio. Peace, peace, Mercutio. Come on. The prince expressly hath forbidden banding in Verona's streets! Come on! Come on! Come on! As I am sped. Is he gone and hath nothing? What? Art thou hurt? I a scratch. A scratch. Mary, tis enough. That's a search. Courage, man, the hurt cannot be much. No. Tis not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but it is enough. It will serve. No, no. Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. <laughs> I am peppered, I warrant, for this world. Plague! The both your houses! Zoons! A dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat to scratch a man to death? A, a braggart, a rogue, a villain that fights by the book of arithmetic? Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. 
I thought all for the best. Help me into some house. Benvolia. All right. I saw faint. What you show? A play! Oh. Of both your houses! They have made worms meat of me. No, Mercutio. This gentleman, the, the, the prince, his near ally, my very friend, has got his mortal hurt on my behalf. My reputation stained with devils, slander devils. An hour has been my kinsman. Oh, sweet Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valor's steel. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, leave Mercutio's dead. <laughs> that valiant spirit hath aspired the clouds, which too untimely here did scorn the earth. This day's black fate on more days doth depend. This but begins the woe. Others must end. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Alive in triumph and Mercutio slain. Away to heaven, respect and lenity. And fire I fear be my conduct now. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again that late thou gavest me. For Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our heads. <laughs> Staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou, or I, or both, must go with him. Thou, wretched boy, that did consort some here, shalt whip them heads. They shall the turn next. Oh. 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 Romeo, away, be gone. Citizens are up, Tybalt slain. Stand not amazed. Thy, the prince will doom thee death if thou art taken. Hence be gone, away! Oh, I am fortune's fool! Why dost thou stay? Where are the vile beginners of this fray? O oh, noble prince, I can discover all. The unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. Here lies the man slain by young Romeo, who slew thy kinsman. Brave Mercutio. Tybalt! Oh, oh, cousin! Oh, my brother's child! Prince, husband, cousin, all oh, the blood is spilt! So, oh, my dear kinsman! Prince, as thou art true, for blood of ours! Shed blood of Montague! Oh, cousin, cousin! And Volio, who began this bloody fray? Tybalt! Here slain, and Romeo's hand did slay. Romeo, that spoke him fair, did him be think how nice the quarrel was, and urged with all your high displeasure. All this was uttered with calm breath, gentle look, knees humbly bowed, could not take truth with the unruly spleen of Tybalt, yet to peace. But that he points with piercing steel at bold Mercutio's breast, who all is hot turns deadly, point to point, and with a martial scorn with one hand beats cold death aside, and with the other sends it back to Tybalt, whose dexterity retorts it. Romeo, he cries aloud, hold friends, friends part, and swifter than his tongue, his agile arm beats down their fatal points, and betwixt them rushes underneath whose arm an envious thrust from Tybalt did hit the life of stout Mercutio. And then Tybalt fled, but by and by comes back to Romeo, who had but newly entertained revenge. And to it they go like lightning, for ere I could draw it to part them with stout Tybalt slain. And as he fell, did Romeo turn and fly? This is the truth! Or like Benvolia died. She is kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes her fall. She speaks not true. Some twenty of them fought in this last strife, and of those twenty can take but one life. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live! Romeo slew 
slew him, he slew Mercutio, who now the price of his dear blood doth owe. Not Romeo, prince, he was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes what the law should end, <coughs> the life of Tybalt. And for that offense, immediately we do exile him hence. I have an interest in your hate proceeding. My blood for your rude brawls doth lie a-bleeding, but I'll immerse you with so strong a fine that you shall all repent this loss of mine. I will be deaf to pleading and excuses, nor tears, nor prayers shall pardon out abuses, therefore use none. Let Romeo hence in haste, else when he is found, that hour is his last. Bear hence this body, and attend our will. Mercy, but murders, pardoning those who kill. <laughs> Thy 
us. This torture should be roared in dismal hell. If he be slain, say I. Or if not, no. Brief sounds to torment my wheel or woe. I saw the wound. I saw it with my eyes. God save the mark here on his manly breast. A piteous corpse, a bloody, piteous corpse, pale, pale as ashes, all bedaubed in blood, all in gore blood. I swooned it at the sight. Oh, <laughs> break my heart. Poor Baker, break at once. To prison eyes, never look on liberty. Vile earth to earth resign, and motion here. Thou and Romeo press one heavy beer. Oh, Tybalt. What? Tybalt. The best friend I have. Courteous Tybalt. Honest gentleman. That ever I should live to see thee dead. What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughtered and is Tybalt dead? My dearest cousin and my dear lord. Oh, then, dreadful trumpet, sound the general doom. For who is living if those two are gone? Tybalt is gone, and Romeo is banished. Romeo who killed him, he is banished. Oh, God, did Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's blood? It did. It did. Alas, the day it did. Serpent heart hid with a flowering face. Did ever dragon keep so fair a cave? Beautiful tyrant, oh, that deceit should dwell in such a gorgeous palace. There is no trust, no faith, no honesty in men. All perjured, all forsworn, all not, all dissemblers. Oh, where's my man? Give me some aqua vitae. These griefs, these woes, these sorrows make me old. Shame come to Romeo. Blistered be thy tongue for such a wish. He was not born to shame. Upon his head shame is a shame to sit, for tis a throne where honor may be crowned the sole monarch of the universal earth. Oh, what a beast was I to chide at him. Will you speak well of him who killed your cousin? Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? Oh, for my lord, what tongue shall smooth thy name when I, thy three hours wife, have mangled it? Weeping and wailing over Tybalt's corpse. Will you go to them? I, I will bring you thither. Wash they his wounds with tears. Mine shall be spent when theirs are dry. For Romeo's banishment. Take up those cords, poor ropes. You are beguiled. Both you and I. For Romeo is exiled. He may 
needed you for a highway to my bed, but I, a maid, thy maiden widow ain't. Come course, come nurse, all to my wedding bed. In death, not Romeo, take my maiden head. No. Hide to your chamber. I will find Romeo to comfort you. I want well where he is. Hearken, your Romeo will be here at night. I'll do him. He's, he's hid at Lawrence Dell. Oh, find him. Find him. And give this ring to my true knight. And bid him come to take his last farewell. Romeo, come forth, come forth, thou fearful man. Affliction is enamored of thy parts. And thou art wedded to calamity. Father. <gasps> what news? What is the prince's doom? What sorrow craves acquaintance at my hand that I yet know not? Too familiar is my dear son with such sour company. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. What less than doomsday is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment ushered from his lips. I... Not body's death, oh, but body's banishment. Huh. Banishment? Be merciful, say death, for exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. Do, do not say banishment. Hence from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls. But, but purgatory, I torture, hell itself. Hence, banish it is banished from the world, and world's exile is death end. Banish it is death misturned. Calling death banishment, thou cuts my head off with a golden axe and, and smiles upon the stroke that murders me. Oh, oh deadly sin! Oh, rude unthankfulness! Uh, thy false our law calls death. But the kind prince, taking thy part, hath turned that black word death to banishment. He's Ah, this is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. It's torture, and not mercy. Heaven is here, where Juliet lived, and every cat and dog, and little mouse. Every unworthy thing live here in heaven and may look on her. But Romeo may not. He is banished. I, flies may do this, but I from this must fly. They are free men, and I am banished. What sayest thou yet that exile is not death? Hadst thou no poison no. mixed, no sharp ground knife, no sudden mean of death, though ne'er so mean, but banish it to kill me all. Banish it! Friar, the damned use that word in hell. Howlings attended. How hast thou the heart, being a divine? Uh, a, a ghostly confessor, a sin absolver, and, and my friend professed to mangle me with that word banishing. Oh, fond, mad man, hear me, but speak a word. Oh, I won't speak again of banishment. I'll give thee armor to keep off that word. Adversity, sweet milk philosophy to comfort thee. Oh, thou art banished. Yet banish it. Hang up philosophy, unless philosophy can make a Juliet, this plant a town, reverse a prince's doom, it helps not, it prevails not. 
talk no more. Well, then I see madmen have no ears. How should they, when that wise men have no eyes? Let me dispute with thee about thy estate. Thou canst not speak of that thou dost not feel. <laughs> Wert thou as young as I, Juliet, uh, Juliet thy love, an hour but married, Tybalt murdered, Doting like me, and like me banished, then mightst thou speak. Then mightst thou tear thy hair and fall upon the ground as I do now, taking the measure of an unmarked grave. Fire! So one comes. Good Romeo, hide thyself. Not I. Unless the breath of heartsick groans, mist like, enfold me from the search of eyes. Go arise! Thou wilt be taken! God's will. What simpleness is this? Uh, whence come you? Uh, what's your will? I, I come from Lady Juliet. Oh, welcome then. Oh, friar, oh, holy friar. Tell me, where is my lady's lord? Where is Romeo? Here. On the ground, with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he is even in my mistress's case, just in her case. Oh, woeful sympathy, piteous predicament. Even so lies she, blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up, stand up, stand, and you be a man for Juliet's sake, for her sake. Rise and stand. Why should you fall into so deep an O? Speaks thou of Juliet? How is it with her? Did she not think me an old murderer? Now I have stained the childhood of our joy with blood removed but little from her own. Where, where is she? And how doth she? <laughs> and what says my concealed lady to our chance of love? She says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps, and now on her bed falls, and then starts up, and on Tybalt calls, and then on Romeo cries, and then down falls again. As if that name, shot from the deadly level of a gun, did murder her, as that name murdered her kinsman. Oh, Friar, tell me, tell me, in what vile part of this anatomy doth my name lodge? I tell me that I may sack the hateful mansion, Friar. Hold right, desperate hand! Art thou a man? Thy form cries out, thou art. Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast. By my holy order, I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt? No. And wilt thou slay thyself? No. And slay thy lady that in thy life lives by doing damned hate no. upon thyself? Why railest thou against thy birth? The heaven and earth, since birth and heaven and earth, all three do meet in thee at once, which thou at once would move. <laughs> Rouse thee, man! Thy Juliet is alive, for whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead. There art thou happy. <laughs> Tybalt would kill thee, but thou slewest Tybalt. There art thou happy. The law that threatened death becomes thy friend and turns it to exile. There art thou happy, a pack of blessings lights upon thy back. Happiness courts thee in her best array. But like a misbehaved and sullen wench, thou pouched upon thy fortune and thy love. Take me. Take heed! For such die. Miserable, go, get thee to thy love, as was decreed. Ascend her chamber, hence, and comfort her. But look thou stay not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live, till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand
thousand times more joy than thou went forth in lamentation. Go before, nurse. Commend me to thy lady, and bid her hasten all the house to bed, which heavy sorrow makes the mat done to. Romeo is coming. Oh. oh, Lord, I could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel. Oh, what learning is. Uh, my Lord, I, I will tell my lady that you will come. Do so, and bid my sweet prepare to chide. Uh, here, sir, a, a ring she bid me give you, sir. Hide you. Uh, make haste, for it grows very late. How well my, my comfort is revived by this. Go hence. Good night. And here stands all your state. Either be gone before the watch be set, or by the break of day disguised from hence. Sojourn in Mantua. I'll fight Balthazar, and he shall signify from time to time every good hap to you that chances here. <laughs> Give me thy hand, tis late. Farewell. Good night. <laughs> but that a joy past joy calls out on me. It were a grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. Things have fallen out, sir, so unluckily that we have had no time to move our daughter. Uh, look, she loved her kinsman, Tybalt, dearly. And so did I. Well, we were born to die. Look you, tis late. Uh, she'll not come down tonight. I promise you, but for your company, I would have been abed an hour ago. These times of woe afford no time to woo. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, good night. Commend me to your daughter. I will. Know her name, her mind, early tomorrow. Tonight she is mewed up to her happiness. Sir Paris, I will make a desperate tender of my child's love. She will be ruled, I think, in all respects by me. Nay, more, I doubt it not. Go you to Juliet, ere you go to bed. Acquaint her here of my son Paris' love, and bid her, mark you me, on Wednesday next. Oh, but soft, what day is this? <laughs> Monday, my lord. Monday? Ha! Huh. <laughs> Wednesday is too soon. A Thursday be it then. A Thursday, tell her she shall be married to this noble earl. Will you be ready? Do you like this haste? Uh, we'll make no great ado, a friend or two. For, uh, hark you, the Tybalt being slain so late, it might be thought we held him carelessly if we reveled much. Therefore, we'll have some half a dozen friends, and there an end. But what say you to Thursday? My lord, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. <laughs> well, get you gone then, a Thursday be it then. Go you to Juliet, ere you go to bed. Prepare her wife against this wedding day. Uh, farewell, my lord. Good night.
tree. Leave me, love. It was the nightingale. It was the lark. The herald of the morn. No nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Night's candles are burnt out, and jocund day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. Yon light is not daylight. I know it. I. It is some meteor that the sun exhales to be to thee this night a torch bearer, and light thee on thy way to Mantua. Therefore, stay yet. Thou needst not to be gone. Let me be taken. Let me be put to death. I am content, so thou wilt have it so. I'll say, yon gray is not the morning's eye. It is but the pale reflex of Cynthia's brow. Uh, nor that is not the lark, whose notes do beat the vaulty heaven so high above our heads. I have more care to stay than will to go. Come, death, and welcome. Juliet wills it so. Oh, it's my soul. Let's, let, let's, let's talk. It is not day. It is. It is. I hence be gone away. It is the lark that sings so out of tune, straining harsh discords and unpleasing sharp oh, Some say the lark makes sweet division. This doth not so. For she divides us. Oh, now be gone. More light and light it grows. More light and light. More dark and dark our woes. Madam. Nurse. Your lady mother is coming to your chamber. The day is broke. Be wary. Look about. And window. Let day in. Let life out. Farewell. Farewell. One kiss and I'll descend. no opportunity that may convey my greetings love to thee. Oh, thinkst thou we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not, and all these woes shall serve for sweet discourses in our time to come. Oh God, I have an ill divining soul. Methinks I see thee now as one dead in the bottom of a tomb. Either my eyesight fails, or thou looks pale. And to trust me, love, in my eyes, so do you. Dry sorrow drinks our blood. Adieu. Adieu. Oh, fortune, fortune. All men call thee fickle, if thou art fickle. What dost thou with him that is renowned for faith? Be fickle, fortune, for then, I hope, thou wilt not keep him long, but send him back. What ho, daughter, are you up? 
calls. Is it my lady mother? What unaccustomed cause procures her hither? Huh. Why, how now, Juliet? Madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death? What, wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live. Therefore have done. Some grief shows much of love, but much of grief shows still some want of wit. Yet let me weep for such a feeling loss. So shall you feel the loss, but not the friend which you weep for. Feeling so the loss, cannot choose but ever weep the friend. Well, girl, that is because thou weep'st not so much for his death, as that the villain lives that slaughtered him. What villain, madam? That same villain, Romeo. Villain and he be many miles asunder. God pardon him. I do, with all my heart. And yet, no man like he doth grieve my heart. That is because the traitor murderer lives. I, madam, from the reach of these my hands, would none but I might venge my cousin's death. We will have vengeance for it, fear thou not. Then weep no more. I'll send to one in Mantua where that same banished renegade doth live. Shall give him tis an unaccustomed dram that he shall soon keep Tybalt's company. And then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. Indeed, I never shall be satisfied with Romeo till I behold him dead. <laughs> Is my poor heart for a kinsman vexed? Oh, uh, madam, if you could find out but a man to bear a poison, I would tend for it that Romeo would, upon receipt thereof, soon sleep in quiet. <laughs> Oh, how my heart abhors to hear him named and cannot come to him to wreck the love I bore my cousin upon his body that slaughtered him. Find thou the means, and I'll find such a man. But now I'll tell thee joyful tidings, girl. And joy comes well in such an easy time. What are they? I beseech your ladyship. Thou hast a careful father, child, one who, to pull thee from thy heaviness, hath sorted out a sudden day of joy that thou expects not, nor looks not for. Madam, in happy time, what day is that? Marry, my child, early next Thursday morn, the gallant, young, and handsome gentleman, the County Paris, at St. Peter's Church, shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Now by St. Peter's Church and Peter too, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. should be husband, comes to woo. I pray you, lady, tell my lord and father I will not marry yet. And when I do, I swear it shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate, <laughs> rather than Paris. Oh, these are news indeed. Here comes your father, child. Tell him so yourself and see how he will take it in your hands. When the sun sets, the air doth drizzle dew. But for the sunset of my brother's sun, it rains downright. <laughs> How now, a conduit girl? What, still in tears, evermore showering? In one little body thou counterfeitst a bark, a sea, a wind. For still thy eyes, which I may call the sea, do ebb and flow with tears. The bark thy body is, sailing in this salt flood. The winds thy sides, who, raging with thy tears, and they with them, without a sudden calm, will overset thy tempest-tossed body. <laughs> How now, wife, have you delivered to her our decree? Aye, <laughs> and she will have none. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. Oh, stop, uh, take me with you, take me with you, wife. How will she none? Doth she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Doth she not count her blessed being so unworthy that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom? Not proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud can I never be of what I hate, but thankful even for hate that has meant love. Uh, how 
How now, how now, Trump logic? What is this? Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not. Thank me no thankings, nor proud me no prouds, but fettle your fine joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church. Or I will drag thee on a hurdle thither. Out, you green sickness carrion! Out, you baggage, you tallow face! Fie, fie, what, are you mad? Good father, I beseech you on my knees. Hear me with patience but to speak a word. Oh, hang thee, young baggage, thou disobedient wretch. Yet yeah, I tell thee, watch. Get thee to church a Thursday, or never look in my face again. Speak not, reply not, do not answer me. Oh, my! Fingers itch. What? We scarce thought us blessed, that God had lent us but this only child. But now I see that one is one too much, and that we have a curse in having her. Out on her, Hildy! Oh, God in heaven, bless her! You are to blame, my lord, to rate her so? And why, my lady wisdom, hold your tongue? Good prudence, smatter with your gossip's go. I speak no treason. Oh. God, yea, God, dead! I cannot one speak! Peace, you mumbling fool! Utter your gravity or a gossip's bowl, for here we need it not! You are too hot. God's bread, it makes me mad! Day and night my care hath been to see her matched, and having now provided a gentleman of noble birch, birth, Youthful, of fair domains, and nobly trained, stuffed, as they say, with honorable parts, proportioned as one's thought would wish a man. And then, to have this wretched, puling fool, this whining mammet in her fortune's tender, to answer, oh, I'll not wed, I cannot love, I am too young, I pray you pardon me. But, as you will not wed, I will pardon you. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think on it, I do not use to jest. Lay hand on heart, Thursday is near, advise. And you are mine, I will give you to my friend. And you are not, hang, beg, starve, die in the street. For on my soul I shall ne'er acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall never do thee good. Trust to it, bethink you, I'll not be forsworn! Be 
beshrew them both. Amen. What? Hmm. Well, thou hast comforted me marvelous much. <laughs> Go in and tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father, to Lawrence's cell to make confession and be absolved. Oh, Mary, I, I will, and, and, and this is wisely done. Ancient damnation! Oh, most wicked fiend! Is it more sin to wish me thus forsworn, or to dispraise my lord with that same tongue which she hath praised him with above compare so many thousand times? Go, counselor. Thou and my bosom henceforth shall be twain. Hold to the friar to know his remedy. If all else fail, myself have power to die. On Thursday, sir. The time is very short. My father Capulet will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. You say you do not know the lady's mind. Uneven is the course, I like it not. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore have I little talked of love, for <coughs> Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she doth give her sorrow so much sway and in his wisdom hastes our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears, which too much minded by herself alone may be put from her by society. Now do you know the reason for this haste? I would I knew not why it should be slowed. Look, sir, here comes the lady towards myself. Happily met, my lady and my wife. That may be, sir, when I may be a wife. That may be must be, love, on Thursday next. What must be shall be. That's a certain text. <laughs> uh, come you to make confession to this father. To answer that, I should confess to you. Do not deny to him that you love me. <laughs> I will confess to you that I love him. So will ye, I am sure that you love me. If I do so. It will be of more price being spoke behind your back than to your face. Poor soul, thy face is much abused with tears. The tears have got small victory by that, for it was bad enough before their fight. Thou wrongst it more than tears with that report. That is no slander, sir, which is a truth. And what I spake, I spake it to my face. Thy face is mine and thou hast slandered it. It may be so, for it is not mine own. Are you at leisure, holy father, now? Or shall I come to you at evening, Mac? My leisure serves me, pensive daughter, now. My lord, we must entreat the time alone. God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse ye. Till then, adieu. And keep this holy kiss. <laughs> oh, shut the door! And when thou hast done so, come weep with me. Past hope, past cure, past hell. Ah, uh, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it. On Thursday next, be married to this county. Tell me not, friar, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If, in thy wisdom, thou canst give no help, do thou but call my resolution wise. And with this knife, I'll help it presently. God joined my heart in Romeo's. Thou art hands. And ere this hand, by thee to 
Romeo seal shall be the label to another deed. Oh, my true heart with treacherous revolt turned to another. This shall slay them both. Therefore, out of thy long experienced time, give me some present counsel. Be not so long to speak. I long to die. If what thou speak, speak not of remedy. Hold, daughter. I do spy a kind of hope. If rather than to marry County Paris, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, then it is likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death to chide away this shame. <coughs> and if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris from off the battlements of yonder towers or walk in thievish ways. Bid me lurk where serpents are, chain me with roaring bears, or shut me nightly in a charnel house, or covered quite with dead men's rattling bones. And I shall do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love. Hold. Go home. Be merry. Give consent to marry Paris. So Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night, look that thou lie alone. Let not thy nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial, being then in bed, and this distilled liquor drink thou off, when presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humor, for no pulse shall keep his native progress but to cease, no warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt continue two and forty hours, and then awake, as from a pleasant sleep. Now when the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. Then, as the manner of our country is, in thy best robes, uncovered on the bier, thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, against thou shalt awake, shall Romeo by my letters know our drift, and hither shall he come, and that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua. And this shall free thee from this present shame, if no inconstant toy nor womanish fear abate thy valor in the acting it. Oh, give me, give me. Oh, tell not me of fear. Hold. Get you gone. Be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I'll send a friar with speed to Mantua with my letters to your lord. Love, give me strength. Farewell. Dear father. <laughs> My daughter gone to Friar Lord? Aye, for soon. Well, he may chance to do some good on her. A peevish, self-willed harlotry it is. <laughs> to hear where she comes from shrift with merry song. Uh, how now, my headstrong, where have you been gadding? Where I have learned me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behest. <laughs> and am enjoined by holy lords to fall prostrate here. And beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you. <laughs> Henceforward, I am ever ruled by you. Huh. Send for the county. Go tell him of this. I'll have his knot knit up tomorrow morning. <laughs> I met the youthful lord at Lawrence's cell huh? and gave him what becoming love I might. Ah. Not overstep the bounds of modesty. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I am glad on it. It is well. Stand up. <laughs> this is as it should be. <laughs> Let me see the county. I very go and fetch him hither. <laughs> now, afore God, this reverend holy friar, our whole city is much bound to him. <laughs> Nurse, will you go with me into my closet to help me sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me tomorrow? Oh, not till Thursday. There is time enough. Uh, go, nurse. Go with her. We'll to church tomorrow.
tomorrow. It's just nearly night. We shall be short in our provisions. Oh, tush, I will stir about. All things shall be well, I warrant thee, wife. I'll not to bed tonight. Uh, I'll, uh, uh, let me alone. Go thou to Juliet, help to deck her up. Okay. I'll play the housewife for this once. <laughs> I'll walk myself to County Paris to prepare him up against tomorrow. Oh, my heart is wondrous light since this same wayward girl is so reclaimed. <laughs> Aye, those attires are best. But, gentle nurse, I pray you, leave me to myself tonight, for I have need of many orisons to move the heavens to smile upon my state, which, thou well knowest, is cross and full of sin. How now, Juliet, needest thou my help? No, madam, we have called such necessaries as are behoveful for our state tomorrow. So please you, let me now be left alone, and let the nurse this night sit up with you, for I am sure you have your hands full all in this so sudden business. Good night, and get thee rest, for thou hast need. shall meet again. I have a faint, cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse! What should she do here? My dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come, vile. be married then tomorrow morning? No, no, this shall forbid it. Lie thou there. What if it be a poison which the friar suddenly hath ministered to have me dead? Lest in this marriage he should be dishonored because he married me before to Romeo. I fear it is. And yet, he thinks it should not. For he has still been tried a holy man. How if, when I am laid in the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo comes to redeem me? There's a fearful point. Shall I not be stifled in the vault to whose foul mouth no wholesome air breathes in, and there die strangled ere my Romeo comes? Or, if I live, shall not the tear of the place, an ancient receptacle where for this many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed, make me run mad? and dash out my desperate brains. <laughs> Romeo. 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 This do I drink.
this day. Oh, this day. The county will be here with music straight, but so he said he would. Oh, I hear him near. Nurse, go waken Julia. Go and deck her up. I'll go and chat with Paris. Hi, make haste, make haste to the bridegroom. He has come already. Make haste, I say. Mistress! Why, why, lady? What? Not a word. But you take your penny words now, sleep for a week. For the next night, I warrant, the county Paris hath set up his rest, that you shall rest but little. <laughs> oh, God forgive me. <laughs> Mary, and amen. How sound is she asleep? Lady. 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 La lady. My lady. <gasps> Alas! Turn. Oh, son, the night before thy wedding day hath death lain with thy wife. There she lies, flower as she was, deflowered by him. Death is my son in law, death is my heir. I will die and leave him all. Oh, life living, all is death. <laughs> Have I thought long to see this morning's face, and doth it give me such a sight as this? A cursed, wretched, hateful day! But one, a poor one, one poor and loving child. A woeful, woeful day. Beguiled, divorced, wronged, spited, slain, most detestable death by thee beguiled, by cruel cruelty quite overthrown. Oh, child, oh, child, my soul and not my child. Dead thou art, alert. My child is dead, and with my child my hopes are buried. Peace! How oh, for shame! Confusion's cure lies not in these confusions. Heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid. Now heaven hath all, and all the better is it for the maid. Your part in her you could not keep from death, but heaven keeps his part in eternal life. The most you hoped for was her promotion, for it was your heaven she should be advanced. And weep you now, seeing she is advanced, above the clouds, as high as heaven itself. Oh, in this you do love your child so ill that you run mad, seeing she is well. She's not well married that lives married long, but she's best married that dies married young. Dry up your tears and stick your rosemary on this fair corpse. And as the custom is, in all her best array, bear her to church. For though fond nature bids us all lament, yet nature's tears are reason's merriment. Sir, go you in. And madam, go with him. And go to Paris. Everyone prepare to follow this fair corpse unto her grave. The heavens do lower upon you for some ill. Move them no more by crossing their high will.
can't trust the flattering truth of sleep. My dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in his throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts him of the ground with cheerful thoughts. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead. A strange dream that gives a dead man leave to think. And breathed such life with kisses on my lips that I revived and was an emperor on me. How sweet is love itself possessed when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. News from Verona. How now, Balthazar, uh, dost thou not three letters from the friar? H how doth my lady? Is my father well? How fares my Juliet? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Hmm. Nay, her body sleeps in Capulet's monument, and for immortal part with the angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you. Forgive me for bringing these ill news. Is it, is it even so? Then I defy you, stars! Thou know'st my lodging. Get me ink and paper and hire post horses. I will hence tonight. I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Your looks are pale and wild and do encourage them. Tush! Thou art deceived. Leave me and do the thing I bid thee do. Uh, hast thou no letters to me from the friar? No, my good lord. No matter. Get thee gone, and hire those horses that will be with thee straight. <laughs> well, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see, for me. Oh, mischief! Thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I, I do remember an apothecary. And hereabouts he dwells, meager were his looks, a sharp misery had worn him to the bones, and in his needy shop a tortoise hung, an alligator stuffed, another skins of ill-shaped fishes, noting this penury to myself, I said, and if a man did need a poison now, whose sail is present death in Mantua, here lives a caitiff wretch, would sell at him. <coughs> this same thought did but forerun my need, and this same needy man must sell it me as, as I remember, this should be the house. What ho! Apothecary! Help! Oh, so long! Come hither, man. I see that thou art poor. Hold, there is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins that the life-weary taker may fall dead and that the trunk may be discharged of breath as violently as hasty powder fired doth hurry from the fatal cannon's womb. Such mortal drugs I have, uh, and Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. Art thou so bare and full of wretchedness and fierce to die? Famine is in thy cheeks. Need and oppression starveth in thine eyes. Contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back. The world is not thy friend nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich. Then be not poor, and break it, and take this. My poverty, but not my will, consents. I pay thy poverty, and not thy will. Uh, put this in any liquid thing you will, and drink it off. And if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy gold. Worse poison to men's souls. Farewell. Buy food and get thyself in flesh. Come, cordial and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave. 
for there must I use thee. Stand aloof. Under yon trees lay thee all along, holding thine ear close to the hollow ground. So shall no foot upon the churchyard tread, being loose and firm with digging up of graves. But thou shalt hear it. Whistle then to me, as signal that thou hearest something approach. Give me those flowers. Do as I bid thee. Go. I am almost afraid to stand alone in the churchyard, but, but I will adventure it. Sweet flower, with flowers thy bridal bed I strew. Oh, woe, thy canopy is dust and stones, which with sweet water nightly I will dew, for wanting that with tears distilled by moans. The obsequies that I for thee will keep nightly shall be to strew thy grave and weep. <laughs> My man gives signal something doth approach. What cursed foot wanders this way tonight to cross my obsequies and true love's right? Muffle me, knight, a while. Balthazar, take this letter. Early in the morning, see thou deliver it to my lord and father. Upon my life, I charge thee. Whate'er thou hearst or seest, stand all aloof, and do not interrupt me in my course. I descend into this bed of death to behold my lady's face. Therefore, hence, be gone. I will be gone, sir. I not trouble you. Shalt thou show me friendship. Take thou that, live, and be prosperous. <laughs> Farewell, good fellow. For all this, I'll hide me hereabouts. His looks I fear, and his intents I doubt. Thou detestable maw, thou womb of death, gorged with the dearest morsel of the earth. Thus I enforce thy rotten jaws to open. And in despite, I'll cram thee with more food. This is that banished, haughty Montague that murdered my love's cousin, with which grief it is supposed the fair creature died. And here is come to do some villainous shame to the dead bodies. I will apprehend him. Stop thy hell of toil, vile Montague. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Sir, condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. I must indeed, and therefore came I hither. Good, gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Fly hence and leave me. I think upon these drawn. Let them affright thee. I beseech thee, put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. Oh, be gone. <laughs> by heaven. I love thee better than myself, for I come hither armed against myself. Stay not, be, be gone, live, and hereafter say a madman's mercy bad thee run away. I do defy thy conjurations and apprehend thee for a felon here. Wilt thou provoke me, then have at thee. <laughs> oh, 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 I fight. I will go for it. Ah! Oh! 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 I am slain. <laughs> if 
if thou be merciful, lay me with chilly head. In faith, I will. Let me peruse this face. Mercutio's kinsman, noble county Paris. What said my man when my betossed soul did not attend her as we rode? I think she told me Paris should have married Juliet. Said she not so? Or did I dream it so? Or am I mad? Hearing him talk of Juliet to think it was so, oh, give me thy hand. One writ with me in sour misfortune's book, I'll bury thee in a triumphant grave. A grave? Oh no. A lantern, slaughtered youth, for here lies Juliet, and her beauty makes this vault a feasting presence, full of light. How oft, when men are at the point of death, have they been married? Which their keepers call a, a lightning before death. How may I call this a lightning? Oh, my love! My wife! Death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy cheeks and in thy lips, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Oh, my dear Juliet. Why art thou yet so fair? Shall, shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous? And that the lean, abhorred monster keeps thee here in the dark to be his paramour for fear of that? I still will stay with thee and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here. Here will I remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-weary flesh. Eyes look your last. Arms take your last embrace, and lips, oh you the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss, a dateless bargain to engrossing death. Oh come, oh, oh come. Bitter conduct, come, unsavory guide, ah, thou desperate pilot. Now at once, run on the dashing rocks, thy seasick, weary bark. Here's to my love. True apothecary. My drugs are quick. Thus, with a kiss, I die. Saint Francis, be my speed. How oh, often I have my own feet stumbled in graves. Who's there? A friend, and one that knows you well. A bliss be upon you. You are Balthazar. Go with me to the vault. I dare not, sir. My master knows not that I am gone hence, and did pay me to stay not to look on his intent. Stay then. I'll go alone. Black 
Alack, what blood is this which stains the stony entrance of this sepulchre? What mean these masterless and gory swords to lie discolored in this place of peace? Romeo! Hail! Oh, who else? <laughs> what, Paris too? And steeped in blood? What an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. Well, the lady stirs. Oh, comfortable friars! Where is my lord? I do remember well where I should be in. There I am. Where is my Romeo? I hear some noise. Lady, come from this nest of death, contagion, and unnatural sleep. A greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intents. Come, come away. Thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead. <coughs> and perish too. <coughs> come, come, I'll dispose of thee among a sisterhood of holy nuns. <coughs> stay not, stay not the question. For the watch is coming. Come, go, good Juliet. I dare no longer stay. Go well, get me head, <laughs> or I will not away. true love's hand? Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. Oh, churl, what? Drunk all and left no friendly drop to help me after? <laughs> I will kiss thy lips some poison yet doth hang on them. Help me die with the restorative. <laughs> Thy lips are warm. <gasps> oh, happy dagger. is bloody. Search about the churchyard. Go, some of you. Whatever you find, attach. Pitiful sight. There lies the county slain. And Juliet, bleeding, warm and newly killed. Go, tell the prince. Run to the Capulets. Raise up the Montagues. There's Romeo's man. We found her by the churchyard. Keep her in safety till the prince come hither. Here's a prior that trembles, sighs, and weeps. We took him as he was coming from the churchyard side. A great suspicion. Stay the friar too. What misadventure is so early up that calls our person from our morning dress? What should it be that they so shriek abroad? The people in the street cry Romeo, some Paris and some Juliet, and they run with public outcry to our monument. What fear is this that startles in our ears? Sovereign, here lies the county Paris slain, and Romeo dead, and Juliet dead before, warm and new killed. Search, seek to know how this foul murder comes. Here's a friar and slaughtered Romeo's man. Oh, 
Heavens! Oh, wife, look how our daughter bleeds! Oh, me! The sight of death is as a bell that warms my old age to a sepulchre! Come, Montague, for thou art early up to see thy son and heir more early down. Alas, my liege, my wife is dead tonight. Grief of my son's exile hath taken her breath. What further woe conspires against mine age? Look, and thou shalt see. Oh, thou untaught! What manner to in this? To press before thy father to a grave? Seal up the mouth of outrage for a while, till we have cleared these ambiguities, and know their spring, their head, their true intent. Then will I be general of your woes. Call forth the parties of suspicion. Here, yeah, my lord. Friar, say at once what thou dost know in this. I will be brief, for my short day of breath is not so long as is a tedious tale. Romeo, there dead, was husband to that Juliet, and she, there dead, that Romeo's faithful wife, I married them. And their fateful marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, whose untimely death banished the new-made bridegroom from the city. For whom, and not for Tybalt, Juliet pined. You, to remove that siege of grief from her betrothed, and would have married her perforce to County Paris. Then come she to me, and with wild looks bid me devise some mean to rid her from this second marriage, or in my cell there would she kill herself. Then gave I her, so tutored by my art, a sleeping potion, which so took effect as I intended, for it wrought on her the form of death. Meantime, I writ to Romeo that he should hither come on this dire night to help to take her from her borrowed grave, being the time the potions for should cease. But he which bore my letter, Friar John, was stayed by accident, and yesternight returned my letter back. Then all alone, at the prefixed hour of her waking, came I to take her from her kindred's vault, meaning to keep her closely at my cell till I conveniently could send to Romeo. But when I came, some minute ere the time of her waking. Here untimely lay the noble Paris and true Romeo dead. She wakes, and I entreated her, come forth and bear this work of heaven with patience. But then a noise did scare me from the tomb, and she too desperate would not go with me. But as it seems, did violence on herself. <laughs> All this I know, and to the marriage her nurse is privy. And if aught in this miscarried by my fault, let my old life be sacrificed some hour before his time, unto the rigor of severest law. We still have no thee for a holy man. Where is Romeo's man? What can she say in this? I delivered to my master news of Juliet's death, and came me in haste from Mantua to this vault, this monument, this letter. He bid me give his father, and paid me to depart and leave him here. Give me the letter, I will look on it. Where is the county's man who raised the watch? Uh, um. Sir, uh, how came your master in this place? He, he came with flowers to strew his lady's grave, uh, and bid me stand aloof, and so I did. Uh, but by and by came one with angry spleen to open the tomb. And, 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 and my, my, my master drew on him, and, and then I ran away to call the watch. This letter doth make good the friar's words, their course of love, the tidings of her death. And here he writes that he did buy a potion from a poor apothecary, and therewithal came to this vault to die, to lie with Juliet. Where be these enemies? Capulet. Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. And I, for winking at your discourse, do have lost a brace of kinsmen. Oh. All are punished. Oh, brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure. For no more can I demand, but I can give thee more. For I will raise her a statue in pure gold, 
The Guava Runner by that name is known. There shall no figure as such race be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. As rich shall Romeo's by his lady's lie, poor sacrifices of our enmity. A glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some will be pardoned, some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. A big round of applause again for our band. Woo!